Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Kayla and welcome. So I am finally back with another five day healthy meal prep for y'all. I've been meaning to get this one filmed a lot sooner, but the last few weeks have just been kind of crazy. We finally nailed down a venue for our wedding and we're trying to book some of the more time sensitive vendors. Uh, but we got all that out of the way. And by the way, let me know if you want me to do a video on some of the wedding planning stuff. But anyway, back to the meal prep. So for this week, I decided to do another anti-inflammatory meal prep because a lot of you were requesting that on my Instagram. But this menu is also great for weight loss because I made sure to keep those calories and macros within the ideal range for the average woman trying to lose weight. Now, if you're a man doing my meal preps, you can just double some of the recipes. And of course, I've listed the full macros for each recipe in today's video on the dedicated blog post, which is linked in the description box below. But a typical day this week is going to range anywhere from 1,350 to 1,600 calories per day, depending on how many snacks you have. So on this week's menu, I'm sharing my nourishing sweet potato breakfast bowl with a side of fresh berries. And this sort of has like a porridge-like texture. So if you're tired of eating the chia puddings, the overnight oats, the oatmeal, this is a great grain-free porridge alternative. And it is packed with anti-inflammatory ingredients. For lunch, we're having my grain-free salmon fish taco bowl with homemade chipotle lime dressing. And this one, it is so good and full of flavor. The best part is that it's good cold, at room temperature, or warm. So it's perfect to take on the go for lunch. And you can substitute the salmon with any other type of fish or with chicken if you're not a fan of the salmon. Dinner is my creamy roasted cauliflower butternut squash soup. And Darrell and I have been eating this soup on repeat for dinner the past three nights. Y'all, it is so good. It's full of flavor and it's full of all of those anti-inflammatory spices. And as a healthy snack to have throughout the week, I'm making my lemon ginger turmeric energy balls. And like I always say, if you want more variety throughout the week, feel free to mix and match any of the recipes from my previous weight loss meal preps. I will go ahead and list that playlist for y'all in the description box below, along with the blog post where you can print off all of today's recipes, calculate your macros, all that good stuff. And I'm even going to list the, um, the glass meal prep containers that I'm using in today's video. Those will be listed below as well. So everything you need will be linked below. But anyway, let's head to the kitchen and get started. All right, let's start with breakfast. We're making my nourishing sweet potato breakfast bowl. And a lot of you are asking for egg-free breakfast ideas. So this one is great. It's super healthy and it's basically a grain-free alternative to regular porridge. First, you'll want to peel the sweet potatoes and then roughly cut them into cubes. You're going to need five cups worth. And sweet potatoes are not only a great source of beta carotene, but they also contain choline, which has anti-inflammatory properties. And on top of that, they're also a great source of vitamin C and vitamin E. And personally, I like to incorporate sweet potatoes into my diet on a weekly basis. I'm going to use my Ninja Foodie to steam the potatoes, but you can also do it on the stove top. So in the Ninja Foodie, I'm adding the rack along with two cups of water. And just make sure you spread those potatoes evenly onto the rack. Add the pressure cooking lid, set the valve to the vent position, and choosing the steam option, you'll want to steam them for about 15 minutes. Now, if you're cooking them on the stove top, just steam them until they're extra soft. All right, while those are cooking, let's mix up the superfood blend. In a small bowl, add in five tablespoons of unsweetened shredded coconut, five tablespoons of ground flax seeds. You can also use ground chia seeds, three and a half teaspoons of cinnamon, one and one fourth teaspoon of ground ginger, a dash of turmeric, and a pinch of sea salt and pepper. So just mix all that up until it's fully combined and then add in five tablespoons of tahini and five teaspoons of melted coconut oil. So turmeric contains curcumin, which has been shown to have anti-inflammatory properties and ginger contains gingerol, which is also an anti-inflammatory. So these two spices are great when you're trying to stick to an anti-inflammatory diet. And if you're not familiar with tahini, it's basically a paste made from sesame seeds and it's a great source of phosphorus and manganese. Now, while I'm waiting on those potatoes to finish steaming, I'm going to go ahead and chop up some walnuts to add as a healthy topping and to get in some extra healthy fats. And then I'm going to wash some fresh berries to add as a healthy side. I love to sneak in those extra antioxidants and vitamin C first thing in the morning. All right, now that the sweet potatoes are done, let's roughly mash them up with a potato masher. You can also use a fork for this. Add in that superfood mixture along with one and a half cups of any type of plant-based milk. I'm using unsweetened almond milk. Now I like to add in a little bit at a time instead of adding the whole cup and a half of milk. But you want to go in with a handheld immersion blender and start to puree it until it fully comes together. 
And I know it may not look very appetizing like some of my other recipes, but I'm telling y'all, it's really tasty and it is so good for you. And just slowly add in more of the milk, pureeing it in between until you've completely run out of milk. You want the final texture to be pretty fluffy like you see here. All right, it's time to transfer it to my glass meal prep containers. And by the way, you can eat this cold or warm. Personally, I like to eat it warm. And to top it off, I'm adding one teaspoon of pure maple syrup to each container, a dollop of dairy-free yogurt, about a tablespoon of the chopped walnuts, and an extra sprinkle of the cinnamon over top. Don't forget to add the fresh berries on the side for the extra vitamin C. And just like that, breakfast meal prep is done. And this will store in the fridge for up to five days. And to reheat it, I'll either use my stovetop or my lunchbox oven. Lunch is my grain-free salmon fish taco bowl, and we're gonna make a homemade chipotle lime dressing to go with it. And this one is definitely one of my new favorite lunch recipes. Let's get that salmon started first. For the homemade taco seasoning, in a small bowl, add in one tablespoon of chili powder, one teaspoon each of sea salt and pepper, one and a half teaspoons of cumin, half a teaspoon of paprika, and one fourth teaspoon each of garlic powder, onion powder, and red pepper flakes. Now I will say this does have a kick to it, so if you don't like too much spice, you can leave out the red pepper flakes. In a bowl, I have five salmon fillets, and I'm adding in one tablespoon of avocado oil, along with two tablespoons of the taco seasoning. And by the way, if you're not a fan of salmon, you can use any other type of fish or even chicken. But just rub that seasoning into the salmon, making sure you coat both sides. And you can fry these up in a pan, but I'm gonna bake them at 375 degrees Fahrenheit for about 25 to 30 minutes. Now while that's baking, let's prep a simple purple cabbage slaw. And purple cabbage is packed with antioxidants, vitamin K, vitamin C, and even folate. It's also high in fiber, which can help to keep you regular. But as you can see here, you'll wanna cut it into thin strips, and you're only gonna need half of the cabbage for this week's meal prep. So feel free to save the other half for juicing, blending it in a smoothie, boiling it, or even making a homemade sauerkraut. Okay, so I'm using the Primal Kitchen Avocado Mayonnaise to give it that creamy texture. And y'all know I love the Primal Kitchen Mayonnaise because it contains super clean ingredients. And you're gonna need 1 4 cup of the mayonnaise, the juice from one lime, and a pinch of sea salt and pepper. Give that a good mix and make sure all the cabbage is coated with that mayonnaise mixture. Then cover the bowl and let's place it in the fridge to let it marinate. Okay, next up, let's prep the sauteed cauliflower rice. In a skillet over medium heat, add in one tablespoon of avocado oil along with five cups of cauliflower rice. And I'm being kind of lazy today, so I'm just using the pre-made cauliflower rice that you get at the store so I can speed things up, but you can certainly rice your own cauliflower. Cover the skillet and just let that saute until it reaches your desired texture. And while we're waiting on that to cook, let's prep the chipotle lime dressing, starting with one fourth cup of the Primal Kitchen avocado mayonnaise, two tablespoons of coconut cream, which is the cream that sits on top of a can of full fat coconut milk, half to one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar, depending on how tangy you want it to be, one one teaspoon of chipotle powder, and this is kind of spicy, so if you don't want it to be too spicy, just add in half a teaspoon. One fourth teaspoon of onion powder, the juice from half of a lime, and one garlic clove minced. Give that a good mix, and I like to add a splash of water just to thin out the consistency a little bit, but this is optional. All right, the salmon is done, so let's remove that from the oven. And going back to the cauliflower rice, once it's reached your desired texture, add in some sea salt and pepper to taste, the juice from half of a lime, and one fourth cup of finely diced cilantro. Give that one more good mix, let it cook for a couple more minutes, and then turn off the heat. I'll also be adding in some cherry tomatoes and one fourth of an avocado to each container. But like I always say, wait to add the avocado the morning or day of so that way it doesn't turn brown. And you can even squeeze some fresh lemon juice over it. I'm gonna go ahead and add them to the containers today just to show y'all how the meal looks once it's fully assembled. All right, let's add everything to the meal prep containers. And I'm just gonna layer it starting with the cauliflower rice. Once you get that in there, just sort of smoosh it over to the side and then add in a serving of the slaw. And it's okay if everything touches because ultimately whenever you get ready to serve it, you're just going to mix everything together anyway. Next, add in the salmon along with some cherry tomatoes. And when you get ready to serve it or pack it on the go, add in one fourth of an avocado. I can't forget the dressing, so in my sauce cups, I'm adding a couple of tablespoons of the chipotle lime dressing to take on the go. And lunch meal prep is done. By the way, you can freeze the cooked salmon if you're worried about it not staying fresh just make sure you defrost it the night before but how delicious does this look y'all 
For dinner, we're making my creamy roasted cauliflower butternut squash soup. And y'all, this soup is full of flavor and it has all of those delicious anti-inflammatory spices. So we're gonna start with roasting the cauliflower. You'll wanna cut it into smaller bite-sized florets and you're gonna need four cups worth, which is about one small head of cauliflower or half of a large head. Add the cauliflower to a bowl, set that aside, and let's prep the seasoning. In a small bowl, add in one teaspoon of ground coriander, one teaspoon of cinnamon, one teaspoon of turmeric, half a teaspoon of sea salt, one fourth teaspoon of black pepper, half a teaspoon of ground ginger, one teaspoon of cumin, and one fourth teaspoon of red pepper flakes. And like I mentioned earlier, the ground turmeric and ginger are great anti-inflammatory spices that you can start to incorporate into your weekly diet. And going back to the bowl of cauliflower, add in one tablespoon of avocado oil along with half of the seasoning mixture. Let's toss that around to make sure that all the cauliflower is fully coated with the spices and then transfer it to a lined baking sheet. Spread it out evenly and then we're going to bake the cauliflower at 425 degrees Fahrenheit for about 15 to 20 minutes or until it's slightly browned around the edges. Now, of course, you can make this soup recipe without the chicken if you want to keep it vegetarian, but I like to add in eight ounces of chicken breast just to sneak in some extra protein. And if you want even more protein, you can add in two chicken breasts. But I'm just going to lightly season that chicken with some garlic powder, sea salt, and pepper. And since the cauliflower is in the oven, I'm going to pressure cook my chicken breast in the Ninja Foodi. Of course, you can also bake it. So I'm adding in the rack along with one cup of water, place the chicken onto the rack, secure the pressure cooking lid, set the valve to the sealed position and then pressure cook it on high for 12 to 15 minutes. While we have those two cooking, let's prep some of the vegetables. You're going to need one heaping cup of chopped carrots, which is about two to three stalks one small onion and just chop that up. And I've mentioned it in another video before, but onions contain quercetin, which has antioxidant properties, anti-inflammatory properties, and some studies have even shown it to have anti-cancer properties. And in a large soup pot over medium heat, I'm adding one tablespoon of avocado oil along with the chopped onion and carrots. And I'm just gonna saute those until the onions are slightly soft and translucent. And while those are cooking, let's cut up the butternut squash. You're gonna need four cups cubed. And butternut squash is high in potassium, which can help to control blood pressure. Of course, the carotenoids give it its bright orange color, so it's packed with antioxidants as well, and it's a decent source of fiber. You're also gonna need one can of diced tomatoes and three cups of vegetable broth. Going back to the soup pot, once those onions are translucent, add in one teaspoon of minced garlic. Go ahead and mix that in and let that saute for about one to two more minutes. Then add in the rest of the seasoning and continue to mix that to make sure that everything is fully coated. Now I'm adding in the diced tomatoes and I'm just gonna let that simmer for about two to three minutes. It's all about letting each ingredient really soak up those flavors. And lastly, I'm adding in the butternut squash along with the vegetable broth. Mix that all together, bring it to a boil, and then reduce the heat to low medium. Cover it with a lid and let that simmer until all the vegetables have softened. And this does take about 30 minutes. All right, once the soup is ready and everything has softened, add in one can of full fat coconut milk. Mix it again and just continue to let that simmer. Once the roasted cauliflower is done, go ahead and add that to the pot as well. And I really wish y'all could smell this right now because it smells so good. And then I'm adding in one more cup of the vegetable broth along with the chicken that I've already shredded with a fork. And now that everything's in the pot, I'm just gonna let that simmer for about five more minutes just to make sure that everything soaks up all those delicious flavors. And once the soup has cooled off a little bit, you can go ahead and transfer it to your meal prep containers. And mine was still a little bit hot here because I was racing against time to get it filmed before the sun went down, but try to let it cool off before you add it to your containers. But anyway, this anti-inflammatory soup is gonna blow you away with how delicious it is. I cannot wait to hear your feedback on this one. And lastly, we have to prep our snack for the week, which is gonna be these lemon ginger turmeric energy balls. And let me tell you, I have been eating these on repeat every single day since filming this. Okay, it's super simple. You're gonna need one cup of walnuts and one cup of raw almonds. Add those to a food processor and just process them until they form a crumbly texture. Then you'll need 12 dates and make sure that you pit them, which basically just means removing the seed. And believe it or not, dates are actually a good source of fiber and they contain flavonoids and carotenoids, both of which are powerful antioxidants that can help to fight inflammation. 
For the spices, I'm mixing one teaspoon of cinnamon, one and a half teaspoons of ground turmeric, half a teaspoon of ground ginger, and I forgot to film it here, but I did add a pinch of black pepper to activate the turmeric. Going back to the food processor, let's add in the pitted dates, along with the spice mixture, the zest from one lemon, and don't skip this part because it actually takes the flavor to the next level and four tablespoons of lemon juice. Mix that all up and be careful because the food processor does get a little bit jumpy right here, so make sure you're holding it down. But once it gets to a chunky paste-like texture, that means it's done. All right, so now all you have to do is scoop out about a heaping tablespoons worth of the mixture and roll it into a tight ball and just repeat that process until all of the mixture is gone. This should yield you about 15 energy balls. And I like to let them firm up in the fridge for about 15 minutes and then transfer them to my storage containers. But these will last in the fridge all week long and the kids will love them too. But just like that, we are done. Another five day healthy meal prep menu for y'all to enjoy. And I can't wait to hear your feedback on all these recipes, but I'm excited because my fridge is fully stocked and ready to go for the week. Well, all right, y'all, that is it for today's video. Another five day healthy meal prep. Of course, if you enjoyed it and you want me to keep making more healthy meal preps like this, be sure to give this video a thumbs up to let me know. Comment below if you give any of today's recipes a try. I love hearing your feedback. Don't forget you can tag me in your food photos and your meal prep photos over on Instagram and I will reshare that on my stories. Of course, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet and you enjoy healthy recipes, healthy meal preps, healthy lifestyle advice, all that good stuff, be sure to hit that subscribe button below. But that's it for today. I'll see you on the next video. Bye.